Hello and welcome. This is Alchemist X, and in today's video, it's going to be a few different topics. Uh, of course, I'll go over banners, but there's really not much to go over. The main thing is I want to talk about the anniversary now that the celebrations are fully over. Celebration music is gone. The screen has switched from its fireworks to just, well, for me, it's the Chapter 8 Northern Pride screen. And overall, I want to say that I thought it was decent. Like, I can't say it was bad, you know, it's definitely not, like, in the realm of, like, kind of how Genshin tends to handle its celebrations or anything like that. It, it was definitely decent, but I definitely felt it was lacking something. And a little bit overshadowed by the 7.5 celebration. And honestly, I think this, the lack of a either unit or memento selector really makes the difference there. Now, they did have access to selectors for high value banners but that's not quite the same thing right because if you're so imagine you've been saving for Lisbeth, right so that means you're probably not wanting to partake in those uh, and it would have been nice for players like in that kind of camp to be able to have something to celebrate and there were some decent things you know they gave away a decent chunk of shards for example there were a couple of the fun free daily things like either enlightenment shards for Ophinius or the guaranteed one unit i got kind of the dud on that for getting rima shards um she's an excellent unit but she was just the least rare of them and i wasn't really wanting or needing any more shards of her because i've got her pretty well raised already but so they did do some stuff it's just so much of what they did was dependent on rng and that's kind of a bummer like as especially the hundred daily summons like those were almost completely useless for me which is messed up because it's like they had the before the leading up to the anniversary and then they had the few during the anniversary celebration which it was like 11 total so 1100 i got three limited things total so it was like 0.002 percent so yeah that just there that's an absolute waste of time uh the the objective luck was horrible and then the subjective luck wasn't too great either i think i got uh, a duplicate of neka's easter memento which is pretty neutral i got 25 shards of nimble not, not amazing but that is a tangible benefit i i do now have his gate seven and I, I would not have it if i hadn't gotten those 25 shards so that that was something and then the third thing was uh, emil's link version which does not help me at all so overall that was an absolute bust the unit pickup was an absolute bust uh the mementos were actually pretty decent though i got i got reasons from that and that was on, in my top five so i can't say that i got nothing from it i did have some luck in that regard but it still bothers me how much of a factor that luck was for the celebrations like i don't mind if that's a supplement like if they want to give free pulls that have awful rates but then also give something nice like a selector then that's one thing and they did give selectors for enlightenment shards so that is something it's just they also did that for the 7.5 and that's why i think that it's overshadowed because like i will remember the 7.5 just because that's when i got lindrake and that was a huge turning point and whereas this celebration i did have some units get a pretty significant boost especially nidhogg and especially otima link which coincidentally also got them on the same day uh just kind of weird happenstance and then of course Seda Link was probably the biggest winner for me just because I got her and then I ended up using my selector that I had been holding on to to get hers. So again, I cannot say it was bad. I just, I felt like something was missing. And I've been feeling that way about other things too. Of course, I talked about in a more recent video, the lack of seasonal events. You know, we didn't get a Valentine's event. I would be surprised if we got a wedding event um april fools i don't know I, I could see them still doing an april fools thing because it's such a good opportunity for them to do something really fun if if they don't do an april fools event i will consider that a large red flag and yeah it, it definitely does worry me that worries me and then the speed up of releasing of link units slash you know just op units in the case of ouroboros that worries me too just because if they're coming out that fast that's that's making it very much like high you know medium to high to to whale level only for spending because if you're free to play there's just there's no way you can keep up with that like you could maybe get one of them and it's going to take a while to get another and if that ends up 
being how like arena is dominated which is not that big of a deal but it, it, if it affects pve to the point where you need really really strong recently released units then that's a very bad sign the game is definitely not there yet it what i'm afraid of is the like the final fantasy brave exvius situation where just you know power creep every update and it's just like the no you know like it's like oh now they got this like six star unit and you know only like the top 10 to 20 percent of units are actually viable that's like the worry that's what we don't want to see it is definitely not there yet but having like Ainz then Logi, then Ouroboros, and now Elizabeth, all in succession. It, I do find it worrying, especially in conjunction with all of the signs of budget cuts, like lack of collabs and lack of seasonal events. I would assume most of 2023's budget probably got siphoned over to Aster Tarticus, you know, for good reason. That game was a, a big step up development-wise. But anyway, I did want to talk a little bit about Lisbeth and the banners. So as far as the banners themselves, I, I don't even need to show the screen. It's it's just that simple. Lisbeth Link has her banner, the usual Link unit, 20 step guarantee. There is a nine step for her secondary memento. And then also same thing for Logi, who's rerunning. And that's literally it. So if you were hoping to benefit from Tagapay on a different banner, this is not your week. Basically, if you were waiting for one of those two units have fun everyone else it's just by default a skip week so yeah not too much to say there as far as elizabeth herself goes she seems like a very solid support not nearly as universal as ouroboros a little bit more specialized a little bit more skewed towards defensive support and magic but she can still help p attack and physical units by way of her panels she's very much a mixture of lisbeth's original job three a little bit of voda and then a little bit more just kind of universal types of things mixed into it she does provide a snowball for wind and water units that for magic attacks so anybody who's a magic user of those two elements will benefit from her even more and if you never got Idrasiel, i think that will raise her value a little bit too but overall I, I definitely, if you had to pick between Ouroboros and Elizabeth, I would still go for Ouroboros just because of how universal she is. But yeah, that is pretty much it for now. Um, hopefully, if you are going for Elizabeth, I wish you good luck and I will see you all next time.